uh, Amit Kumar and uh, today uh, I am going to talk about internationalization testing. Uh, we all uh, have known a lot about you know software testing, what are the various kinds of testing existing and this is uh, something uh, which is very new. A lot of people may not be knowing what is internationalization testing is all about. So I will be covering uh, a lot of details about the internationalization testing, why it is important and why should we learn about internationalization testing and how it helps you in your career. So before we get into that, let me give an introduction about the company. Uh, we are Kernel Trainings and uh, we offer world class online training on various technologies. We have trained a lot of people, a lot of uh, uh, students, professionals across the globe. Uh, on courses like software testing, Linux, VMware, Oracle, DBA and we provide so support and services, uh, consulting, training and we have our own data center to support uh, all the trainings where we also provide you hands on on the trainings which we gave. So for people like you know uh, corporate students, uh, uh, this is uh, one of the best place uh, to learn and uh, get yourself uh, mm, so expert, gain expertise in, in this kind of uh, software testing domain and internationalizing testing domains. Uh, let me give you a brief introduction about myself. Uh, I am a QA manager working in a multinational company with 14 years of uh, software testing domain experience. Uh, in that specifically, I have uh, almost 11 plus year experience in internationalization and localization testing. When it comes to certification, I am an IS2QB and ITL certified. I also hold a certification in as a scrum master, uh, a scrum product owner. I have done my MBA from one of the premium IAMs and I am a master's in computer management. I have written multiple white papers and I have been invited as a guest speaker or panelist in multiple international conferences. So this is the course labors. Uh, it is at a very high level. There are a lot of things internally which I will be talking about uh, uh, in, in this particular uh, course. So just to tell you okay uh, what is the labors? we will talk about what is internationalization, what is localization, uh, and what is globalization. Okay, then we'll also talk about the pseudo localization testing and why internationalization is so important. So this syllabus will have both uh, uh, you know, theory and hands on also in the same in some of the session I will be uh, teaching you how to set up a localized environment. When I say localized environment I mean that you have a Windows operating system but not in English. It would be in Japanese, German, Spanish, Italian, you know, all these languages. Similarly, for other platforms like you know Linux, Unix. So when 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 we have to perform uh, our internationalization testing, we we take a localized environment. We choose Windows Japanese. We choose you know Windows German. We choose you know uh, if we are working on Linux like Red Hat, we take a language of Japanese, German rather than taking language of English and perform of our uh, item testing or internationalization testing. Okay, uh, even the browsers, okay, uh, the browsers which uh, you work upon, normally we work on, you know, English browser, English internet, internet explorer, you have uh, Firefox, you have Chrome, so all this you work uh, on the English browsers. But when we will be doing some internationalization testing or localization testing, we will be working on Japanese browsers, okay, German browsers, okay, Italian browsers. Same goes for the databases. When you are installing a DB, normally we work on the English databases where everything is in English, okay, right from launching the installer of, say, you are installing Oracle DB, right? you install the English version of Oracle. But for internationalization testing, we will be installing a localized version of Oracle. So this is a difference, right, uh, between normal testing and and uh, you know the testing which I will be teaching you. Okay, I'll also talk about what is encoding. Okay, these are the terminologies which are very new to you people. 
uh, we'll also talk about IMEs. What are IMEs? IMEs are input method editors. Now, say you got an English, you got a laptop where you have uh, the keyboard is in English, right? And uh, I want to enter Japanese character using my English keyboard. How do I do that? Okay, so you can do that actually. Uh, you might, it may sound weird or uh, something if you are hearing it for the first time, but actually you can enter Japanese words using your English keyboards. And I will teach you how to do that. Then we'll also teach you how, what are the things which need to be taking care of while setting up the database with respect to internationalization testing or localization testing. We'll also, you know, say, I don't know the language, right? This is one of the example, one of the barriers which we will face as a non-native speaker. I don't know Japanese. Then how will I ensure a quality, right? These are some of the questions which will come to your mind and I'll address those uh, questions in my sessions. Are you aware of the cultural bias assumptions? We'll make you aware. I, I have a, uh, multiple things which I'll be discussing as part of the cultural bias assumptions. Then I'll teach you how and what all to be test as a part of internationalization testing. What are the rules of testing various testing tools internationalization testing? How do you write test cases for ITN testing? We'll discuss about the kinds of issues you can found as a part of internationalization testing. Then how, how what are the, some of the tips and tricks to perform internationalization testing? Uh, we'll also touch based upon, you know, uh, how to troubleshoot problems encountered on localized environment, right? When I say localized environment, I mean that, okay, my, my operating system, my database, my browsers, everything is non-English. Anything other than English, Japanese, German, Spanish, Chinese, Korean. We'll also talk about locale, Unicode, and why it, is, uh, why it is so important, and also about automation. So this is just at a high level. Uh, once we uh, keep on, uh, you know, uh, going, moving, going forward, you know, we'll we'll take you uh, in depth of each and every topic. So this is just a, a, a you know a recap of what is a software testing, and then we'll move uh, to internationalization and localization testing because internationalization and localization testing is a part of software testing. So I thought of you know. Just um, you know, giving you a definition: what is software testing mean? So all of you must be aware of software testing. You know, you, we we have so many software application systems coming out into the market, and uh, before we launch any uh, product into the market or system application into the market, we have to perform testing. We have to test the software so that it it performs what it is supposed to perform and not what it is not supposed to perform. So in layman's language, software testing is an activity which is done to make sure that the system is defect free and it is doing what it's supposed to do. Now before I get into the internationalization testing and or localization testing and the definition of it, there are a few things which is very important to, to understand. Let's begin. Okay. Can any one of you identify this language? So if someone uh, don't know the language, it is very difficult to identify, right? But if I have to make a guess, okay, which language is this? Okay, is it Hebrew? It could be Spanish, it could be you know, uh, Turkish, Danish, but I don't know because even I don't know that this language, which language it is. But, okay, even in my wildest guess, I wouldn't have said that this is garbage. Okay, this is no language at all. It is a garbage value. So this happens when we don't know the language. We do mistakes. Let's look at this particular advertisement now. Okay. If I ask any one of you to explain this advertisement, this is very plain uh, advertisement where uh, you have got a dirty cloth and then you have a washing machine okay in this step you got a washing machine you have detergent here so what you did we put this dirty cloth in the washing machine okay and you get a neat and clean cloth what is the problem with this advertisement there is a very big problem with this advertisement it's not about you know color or anything it's the way it can be depicted 
by a user. So if we are in India, okay, or in America, where we read text from left to right, okay, this makes perfect sense, right? But suppose you have posted the same ad in Arabic countries where the end users or the customer reads from right to left. Just imagine the kind of failure it will bring it to your, you know, uh, business of selling a washing machine. So if I'm in Arabic, in Arabic countries where we read from right to left, what it is saying? It is saying that you have got a very clean cloth and I am selling this washing machine. You will use my washing machine, put some detergent in it and you are going to get a dirty cloth. This is just disastrous. So why I am telling you this that when we are not aware of the cultural aspects of a country, okay, we are bound to fail in those countries. If I have to run my business in Arabic countries, I cannot just go and post this ad. It could be a very successful business in India, but if I don't know the cultural nuances of a country, it could be disastrous to us. And now in this global economy, where, you know, everybody wants to set up or uh, you know uh, run a business in every country we should know about the cultural things of a particular this this was just an example there are so many things which differ from one country to another country and if we don't know these things we are bound to fail everybody must be using facebook these days right you know that okay facebook can be launched in multiple languages not only in english and if you are not catering to a particular country, then you may not be successful, right? I'll tell you multiple examples uh, about uh, we not making good business if we don't know the languages or uh, if we don't know the culture related things of a particular. So let's talk about some of the famous quotes. If I'm selling to you, I speak your language, but if I am buying Dan Mozenzi Dosh Spriken, what it means? It means that if I am selling to you, I will speak your language. But if I am buying from you, better you speak my language. And because I am the customer. So Dan Mozenzi Dosh Spriken, this is a German statement. What it means is, if since I am buying from you, please you speak my language. I won't be speaking your language, right? And that's how the business runs in this industry. I cannot go to a Japanese customer and, and say that, okay, this is my English product. This is everything in English. You should use it. No. If you have to be successful in this competitive environment, you need to speak their language to sell your software or any product into that particular country. But the other famous one of the famous quote is that over 6 billion people live in over 200 countries spanning 24 time zones. These people use hundreds of currencies to conduct business in thousands of different languages and dialects. Their business practices are literally all over the map ranging from simple barter to cash, to electronic payment, to sophisticated arbitrage. And most speak Chinese, Spanish, Russian, or something other than English. We always think that English is the most widely spoken language. And everybody is running uh, behind making their software for English markets. While doing this, they are not capturing the non-English market. We, we have our currency in, in, in rupees, Indian currency in rupees. 
US we have dollar, European countries you have euro, you have pounds, you have so you have Australian dollar, you have Canadian dollars, you have so many you know we, we do uh, the currencies symbols or the currency in which a particular country operates is different for different countries and if we don't know that okay they conduct business in different currencies we won't be able to sell our software now let's know some of the interesting facts okay and why i'm teaching you there is a reason behind this of, of me telling you all these things because if we are not aware of a cultural related things of a country and if we have to sell our software in those countries we will not be able to successful for example and it applies not only to software it applies to each and everything in which we want to do a business be it a washing machine okay be it um, cars be it you know plane be it uh, anything okay any mobile if we don't know the market, the countries where we want to operate, we will not be able to successful. For example, a US automobile manufacturer would not find much success if they attempt to sell a left hand drive car in Australia, UK or Japan. Why? Because in Australia, UK or Japan, we the people drive left hand the driver sees is on the left hand not on the right hand. similarly you we we don't have a universal size labeling in the clothing right a u.s size is a different than a european size than an indian size right so we should know that the size labeling in clothing is different in different countries. Washing machines across the world are different. Some are front loaded washing machines, some country uses, some country uses you know, top loaded washing machines. So these are different for different countries and if you don't know how they use a particular product, you will build a wrong product and then you will not be able to succeed in that particular market. Now let's talk about uh, daylight savings. Some of you might have heard about daylight savings where you know uh, if you have observed carefully during the daylight savings what happens is your calendar the meeting in YT okay shifts by an hour but that daylight saving is mostly used in US but it's not the case that all the states of US uses that. It is done to save an hour. Okay, so it's it's an interesting concept, and if you are not aware of those things, you may not introduce this particular feature in, in your application, and you are bound to make mistakes. Now, colors. This is also very important aspect. If you are uh, selling a product where colors plays a significant role, then you need to know what a particular color in that country signifies for example white color in some countries donates a happy moment you know people uh, uh, the bride and the groom wears white cloth uh, when they are getting married but in same but the same color in some of the countries are worn on the death of someone okay so if you are not aware which color is taken in which way in which country and if color is an important aspect of your product you are bound to make mistakes then you will not be able to do good business in that particular country similar things goes for the numbers some numbers are lucky in some countries some are unlucky in some countries okay so these are what these are numbers may not be you know lucky or unlucky numbers may not be related directly to the software application but the reason being i am telling you this is that we should know okay about the cultural nuances of a country so that when we are doing business in those countries you know we, we place it in the right way 
in front of those countries. And these are the things which is very important for internationalization testing because when I am making a software application for an international market, okay, I should or my software should be able to cater to that market. It should change depending on the cultural things of that particular country. It should support each and everything which is related to that country. Okay, and tell you, I'll tell you in my future slides what are the things with respect to a software application which is different for different countries. Some other interesting facts. Okay, and these are not limited to this. Since this, I'm this is the, this is the first class which I am taking. We will be, I will be taking you through a lot of interesting facts and figures and things which you have not heard about it, and which is very important when we are building a soft uh, an application which we want to sell in international markets, right? These days everything is SaaS based, right? Software as a service. We are not giving CDs or installer to the customers. What we are doing? We are saying that, okay, this is, we will host the software at our end. We will take care of the infrastructure. You just, we will create a space for you in the cloud and you use my software as a service. The performance, the infrastructure, I, we take care of it, right? And when, and the same, software application or the system is shared or given for multiple customers and these multiple customers are residing or doing business in multiple countries. For example, let's let's take currency symbols. Okay. Now normally, you know, we normally if we are not aware, we know that okay, currency symbols is always prefixed or prefixed to a number means it starts before the number. So we place a, a dollar symbol, okay, and then the number comes. Right? It happens in Indian rupees also. It happens in US dollars also. But do we know that the the France in France, okay, the currency symbol appears right to the number, not left to the number. Okay, so if you are building an application where you have to show the currency symbol, okay, and by default you have shown the currency symbol to the left of the number in France, that is a mistake you are doing it. That is not appropriate as per the that particular country and you, and that is a defect, that is an error for that country. Right, so you won't be able to sell your product in France if you are appending or prefixing or putting the currency symbol to the left of the number. You have to put it after the number or right to the number. Similarly, start week, start day of the week. So there is a there is a typo. It not start week of the week. It start day of the week. So if there is a calendar, if you have observed your calendar properly, if your locale or the system is set to English. We are talking about English only here, okay? So US weeks start with Sunday. Means if you have a calendar, okay, then the then the day in US week will start from Sunday. But if you have a calendar of UK, okay, the week will start with Monday. So you see that Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Sunday to Saturday, right? This is how it will be shown for US weeks. But for UK weeks, it will be Monday to Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. This is how it will be coming. So if we don't know these things, then how will we test our software application? Within English, there is a difference, right? UK English is different than US English. Forget about Chinese and Japanese and, uh, you know, German and Korean things. Okay. So, even the start day of the week is different for different countries. And if I'm building a software application and not taking care of these things, then I am bound to make mistakes. The software will not sell in that particular 
country because I am not catering to their requirements. I am not making my software which is which is related to their locale, which follows their standards. Now let me ask you one question. Okay, very interesting. One billion is equal to how many? You will be surprised. One billion is equal to thousand million in US, but in UK, one million is equal to one lakh. One billion is equal to one lakh which is a trillion in US. So both are correct. The one, you know, one billion is equal to thousand million and one billion is equal to one. Ten, ten million. Okay. One lakh million, sorry, ten lakhs million. So what it says that to become a billionaire in UK, you need to have more money with you. Okay, I can bet on this that you you go and search google it whether whatever is whatever i'm telling is correct or not 99 percent of the people do mistakes when i ask this question because they don't know okay and if you have you are selling or you're making a, a software application meant for financial uh, things or main meant for banking domains you need to know this to whom i am going to call it a billionaire in us or what 1 billion mean in US and what 1 billion means in UK. Now let's talk about something. Look at this, you know, US English and UK English, the vocabularies. This is what this is. We are talking about the vocabulary differences. In US, we call elevator. And the same thing in UK is called lift. Hood is same as bonnet. Mutual fund, unit trust, pavement, road, sidewalk, pavement, trunk, boot. So you see the vocab difference, okay, same, same thing is, you know, uh, given the different names are called differently in different countries. So if, if there is a software application where uh, we are talking about elevators or if, and if we are selling that product in, in US market, we have to call it as elevator, but the same thing should be called lift if we are selling the, 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 the application in UK. So you have to take care of so many things. So many things are different for different. The currencies are different. The vocabs are different. Okay. The, 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 the calculations are different for different countries. Spellings are different. Now look at the spellings. Okay. Internationalization. The topic internationalization which I am just teaching you right now has two different spellings. And both are correct. It's not that one is right and one is wrong. The reason is they are spelled differently in different countries. That's hard. Look at the spelling of center. One is C E N T E R and C E N T R. Aluminium. Flavor. B O R B U U R. Tire. T I R E T Y R E. So nothing is wrong here. Both are correct. So spellings are different in different countries. Right? And that's why we should know lot of things when we are making a software for international markets. We cannot just make software for English markets because I'll tell you why we should be catering because a lot of potential is there in non-English non markets. So if we are not aware of this, then probably, you know, if, if we are typing internationalization, uh, in, in UK English as uh, Z A T I U N, probably it will be wrong here, but it is right in, in US. Now, how do you read this? If anybody, this is a date, I mean, right? Six five two thousand nine. How 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 can you uh, when you tell me which is is it is it sixth May two thousand nine or is it fifth June two thousand nine? Both are correct, right? Depending on where it is being used. The date format. The date format of every country is different. So, if we are writing this particular, hard coding this particular format, it could be right for one country, but it could be wrong for other country. Right? So, the same date, okay, 6, 5, 6, 2009 is written in 
different way in different countries. The formatting is different. Look at US. Short date format and long date we have both. 6 May 2009. Is it written like 5 6 2009. In UK the same 6 May 2009 is written like 6 5 2009. Here it was 5 6 2009. Right. Means here the month. This is month. This is date. This is year. Here it is date. T D M M Y Y Y. Okay, here it is year, month. In Germany, here it is uh, date, month, and year. Look at the separator here. Everywhere, US, UK, Japan, you have backslash as the separator. But in Germany, dot is the separator. So these things are different, right? And there are a lot of things which are different in different countries. Okay, this is my introductory class, so I am not good getting through the details. When we get into the details, we'll show you there are so many things which differ from country to country and which we should know in order to make a software which is which can be sold in international market. We build software these days which is which is used in every part, every corner of the world. And if we don't know these things, okay, we will not be able to make a software which can sell in the all the uh, parts of the world and we will be left with English markets only and we will be losing out a lot of money, lot of business in non-English markets. Now let's come to the definition of internationalization. So whatever till now I uh, told you is to make you aware of things which are culturally different for different countries and as a user as a tester if I am not aware of those things then I will not be able to perform my internationalization testing properly as a coder as a programmer I will not be able to develop an international internationalized product or internationalized software application I will make mistakes so we should be knowing I will be telling you there are a lot of things other than date, time, number, format which differs currency, which differs from country to country, which we should be aware in order to perform a proper internationalization testing so that our product is or can be sold in the international markets. Now let's get in the definition of it. What is internationalization? Okay, we we the short form of internationalization IETN N. And why we write I in 18N is that there are 18 characters between I and N. So it is I and N. Similarly goes for L and N. There are 10 characters between N and, N and then globalization. So we have to, before we get into the details of it, we have to understand the difference between internationalization and localization. What is the difference? So internationalization is the process of designing a software application so that it can be adapted to various languages and regions without human changes. Now let me explain what this means. We, these days we keep on installing various software, right? If we get a window, we install it, install it, and, and then, then you click next, next, fill some details, and then the product operates and installed. Or if you are installing a browser, you get an EXE, you double click on it, and then, you know, uh, follow the steps of installation and install it. In, when when I say that my product is internationalized, okay, I mean that the same English executable I should be able to install on a localized environment. When I say localized environment, my operating system is localized, non-English. Let's say, let's take an example of Japanese. So my same executable should be able to install on Japanese operating system with a Japanese database SQL Server or Oracle or Ingress or DB2 whatever or on a localized browsers. So my whole environment is localized. I have a Japanese browser, Japanese operating system, Japanese DB. My product is in English. 
So my product is internationalized when I am able to install my English product executable on the localized environment. It should get installed properly. Okay. It should behave the same way I installed the English executable on English operating system. All the features functionality should work the same as it was working on an English operating system. Along with that, there are things which it should support. Uh, I should be able to enter Japanese characters in the fields, in the text areas. It should be able to save my Japanese character properly. I should be able to retrieve my Japanese character properly. Along with that, the date, time, currency of Japanese should be supported. So when I install my product, it gets installed properly. And if there is a date which gets displayed, okay, login time or you know, uh, the date format should be of Japanese, which is by year, month, and date, and not DDMM by by. So these are the additional things which my software should be able to support. Means depending on the language, whatever cultural related things are different for that language should be supported. At this point of time, nothing was localized. Localized means nothing was translated. Only thing is your environment was localized, but your product when you launched, you get everything in English. Okay, installer is in English, next is in English button, when are you entering details, everything is in English. This point of time, nothing is localized or nothing is translated. But when we go for localization, localization is one step ahead of internationalization. You need to be internationalized to go for localization. What happens in localization is that now you translate each and every string which was in English into a particular language, say for example Japanese. Okay, so this time when you launch your installer, depending on the locale, depending on the localized environment, whether it's a Japanese or German, everything right from installer to your look and feel, the whole UI gets translated into that particular language. So this time what will happen? Everything will look into Japanese, everything will look into German. Okay, your UI will be translated to German. But before going for localization, you must be internationalized. And the combination of both internationalization and global localization is called a globalization. Okay, it will be clear from this example. Look at this. This is code, right? So this is an internationalized one where the product is in English only. Nothing is translated. Okay. But look at localization, what we do this. The content inside that. Right? But it gets translated into different languages. This is a localization. The UI changes. Now we'll talk about why should we go for internationalization. This is a very old data, old report, uh, which is from IDC Black Book 2007 Q3. It says that 57% of the market is English. And rest 42.9% is non-English market, which includes, you know, uh, Turkish, Czech, Russian, Hebrew, Japanese, German, French, Spanish, Italian, Chinese, Dutch, Portuguese, Swedish, Korean. Okay. So if you are making your application only for, and then this is reverse now, this has become, you know, non-English market has become 60 and English has become 40. So, if you are not making your product I-18 and ready, okay, or internationalized, you are going to lose that 60% or 40% of the market, which is non-English. And that's why most of the companies are moving towards internationalization. And internationalization testing is something which you will be never taught in any institute, any college, any uh, aware okay but this is all the product based companies 
are doing internationalization and localization. They need people to do internationalization testing. Why internationalization is necessary? Because there was a project uh, which was you know, uh, done by NASA. Okay, and as I some time back I told you that in, you know even the measurement the metric system is different for different countries. And there was a project on which uh, uh, there were people working from uh, U.S., from Germany, and from some other places where the metric system were totally different. So the calculation which they did went wrong. They got confused over the measurement system, and because of that, NASA lost 125 million Mars orbiter. Some of the geopolitical issues which arise if we don't know the culture things. Windows 95, okay, was not sold in India because they have shown a, a disputed area in the map of India as part of Pakistan. India has banned Windows 95 to be sold in India when they realized it. Microsoft employees were in were arrested in Turkey as Kurdistan was shown as a separate in, entity in, in the country's map. Okay, so if we don't know the cultural things of a particular country, okay, you can end up in jail. Software application does have maps, okay, and if you have not showing a proper territory which belongs to a particular country, you will end up in jail. Or you will not, your software application will not be sold in that market until you correct that issue. Now we will talk about some of the culturally biased assumptions. Being studied in English from the childhood, okay, we, we are, uh, are born in countries where uh, English is more prevalent as a language. We always have some assumptions, right, which are biased. And for doing proper international testing, you should know Okay, what are the cultural bias assumptions? For example, A to Z contains all the letters in the alphabet, which is wrong. Okay, you have Arabic, Korean, Russian letters, and they are different, and they, they doesn't come under this A to Z. All scripts contains uppercase and lowercase letters. No. Chinese, Japanese, Korean doesn't have the concept of uppercase and lowercase. So don't assume that everybody will have, every kind of language will have uppercase and lowercase. Okay? Words are separated by spaces. And this is very interesting. Normally, when you when we speak, we, we, they, when we write a statement, okay, the, everybody is separated by space. But that doesn't hold true in Chinese, Japanese, Korean and Thai. So, a sentence would look like this. There is no space between after a sentence would look like this. So, so how do you, if we have to find a particular string or search a particular string in a statement, how would you find in case of Japanese? You have to write a different algorithm, right? Punctuation is same. No. Many languages use different punctuation symbols. Look at the, this. Quotes. English it is written like this. German it is like this. French it is like this. Full stop. It's different. Question mark. Look at Spanish. If you are asking or writing a question, you should start with a you know downward question mark and end with a upward question mark. Isn't it interesting? If you don't know that, okay, this is how we should write a statement in Spanish, a question in Spanish, you will not be able to sell your product or it is in a buggy product. Text is written from left to right. No, this is not true. I told you in the beginning, Arabic and Hebrew are bidirectional languages and they are written from left to right. Chinese can be written horizontally from left to right or vertically from right to left. All calendar systems are Gregorian calendar. That also doesn't hold. Okay, we have a, a Hijri calendar, Japanese era calendar, Hebrew calendar. Okay, for example, Thai government 
only permit with this calendar so if you are making a software which you want to sell in thai government sell to thai government you have to use with this calendar and not the gregorian calendar which you see in, in most of the software applications characters are equivalent to byte that is also not true sort order is same for all the language that's in the common script that is also not true sorting order is not same word contains consonants and vowels no that is also not true arabic and hebrew don't require vowels at all now what to test in iit net test see what i am i'm telling you going to tell you from this one we are you know, uh, discussing in detail but uh, how you do your testing you execute your regular test cases but on a non english environment with non english data what are you see in iit net test you check for character display whether i am able to enter japanese german characters or not data handling date time number from the sort sorting is different in different languages search is different in different languages if you you are making a software for japanese market if you create a document in japanese and you want to search is whether you are getting proper results or not you have to test them postal address format person name format work week start day of the week calendar support all these things are different for different countries okay i will be talking about in detail in my, in my subsequent modules and subsequent sessions sudo do there is something called sudo localization test where you find hard coded strings concatenation truncation what is hard coded strings hard coded strings you know whenever we are writing or developing a particular program what normally a uh, developer a programmer does is he hard code the strings in the code itself which is a very long process when you go for localization all the strings which are hard coded in the program will not get will not get translated and it will appear in english so you should always externalize the strings out of that a lot of times what happens there are two strings which are getting added at the run time okay while in english it makes sense but when it go for localization or translation the meaning might change drastically so we should avoid concatenation at run time truncation what happens you have got a ui right you have and and you have created a layout for that after translation when you go for localization what happens after translation the string length increases drastically to to some in some language it increases up to 70% so if not taken care of of the layout your string will get truncated so all these problems you find with pseudo localization testing and what is pseudo localization testing okay i will i will tell you what is pseudo localization testing it simulates a localization part of the translation process what we do we prefix and suffix with some characters in every string and create a lot of it for example you have a button called label card you know username password so what we'll do we'll prefix something uh and suffix some localized characters and this we do in all the strings in the product and create a build out of it and then we find those three kinds of defects okay in the ui so wherever you see that prefix and suffix are missing that means those things are hard coded okay you wherever you see that okay some prefix are getting truncated that is a problem with your layout which you have to fix now i will be covering all this in detail now this is again uh, some of the tips which we we have to remember while working on the localized environment because if you are non native speakers you need and you don't understand the language you need to know these things so i can basically what happens whether you go for a english uh, or a windows or a japanese windows operating system the icons remain same so if you know the icon in english you can know or say that okay this is the same thing which is in japanese or japan so without knowing the language you can say okay i if i have to click on the computer this is the icon of the computer i can check it if this is a folder this is a administrator whatever okay shortcut keys most of the time shortcut keys in english and other languages are same but you cannot depend uh, fully on it because it's not in the lab and especially in the language positioning in the menus you can rely but not always you have got online tasks to choose 
and the other way is you know if you are working started working on a low pressure environment say somebody asks you to work on a grappling system and you don't know what you can do you can have an English system in parallel with with a, with the Japanese system and then you know slowly you will learn how to work on a localized environment I tell you I, I only know German language apart from English Hindi uh, okay uh, but I can I can work on any language you give it to me I, I, should, I am able to install any operating system uh, any language operating system Windows Unix Linux whatever okay so it comes with experience but yes, a non-English, non-native speaker can perform internationalization testing. You cannot perform the localization testing where what we do is where we, we, we look at the quality of translation. That is something which needs to be done by a native speaker. But you can always perform internationalized testing without knowing the language. Now, this is the last slide uh, of today. We uh, so these are some of the things which we talk, which we keep on different from uh, language to language. See, this is for a friends, you know, and this is how the date format is: short date, long date, short time, long time, first day of the week. Okay, then you also have uh, numbers. You see how the numbers are there. What is the decimal symbol? What is the number of digit after decimal? Digit grouping. So these are the things which keep on differ differing from language to langu language. And we should be aware of these things. If met met measurement system, okay. If we don't understand or if we don't know, then we will not be able to do a height and understand. Now we are open for questions. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Now, whatever I showed you today or uh, worked you all of you through this this is at a high level this is an intensive course which may go up to 16 to 20 hours for the course where will teach you how how to you know install the localized environments how to install localized dbs what are the things you should look out for how to perform internationalization testing okay what kind of issues you get in internationalization testing what kind of issues you get in localization testing? Okay, how to you know uh, uh, find out the errors? Uh, and, and we have a lot of sample test cases which we will be sharing across all of you. Uh, uh, and uh, from that you will get a lot of knowledge on internationalization and localization testing. So now I'm open for questions. Uh, Spandna, if you have any.